This video is I'm going to show two additional modes that I added to the uh, 9 mode blue box, bringing it up to a 11 mode blue box. And um, these two modes that I added are a little bit unusual. They're, um, they're tones that support the old IMTS mobile telephone system that predated the, uh, the first cellular systems that were rolled out in the United States back in 1980. 82 or 83. And IMTS was a, a, a method that didn't use cells like the current cellular system. It used very centralized high power transmitters and receivers that were located on top of a single point in a high city. They only had about 12 channels, I think, um, divided up between private and the uh, private companies and the Bell system. Uh, Bell system had their own set of channels. Not surprising for back then. And uh, anyway, it was a uh, very low capacity system, could only handle a very a few subscribers, and there were a lot of people queued up waiting for phone numbers. But the way this worked over the air was it used a very simple tone system. There were a set of jumpers inside the telephone that set the mobile ID of the, um, of the device. And those could easily be changed by the user just by opening them up and changing the numbers. In fact, when I worked for a uh, devel development lab that had uh, done some work with these, back in the day we had uh, some special boxes that were set up with a set of thumb wheels that could actually change the mobile ID number on the fly. The mobile ID number was only the area code plus a four-digit number, so within an area code you could only support a total of 900, uh, sorry, uh, 9,999 mobiles which was, you know, fairly limiting, but back then, because the channel capacity uh, on the radio side was so low, that was generally pretty, uh, pretty adequate to, to handle um, the subscribers within medium and even large sized cities. Um, there were some other schemes to get around that, but that's basically how it worked. So, um, I've got two modes to support IMTS, and it could be freaked and it could be hacked by coupling a um, tone generator, like I'll demonstrate here, into the microphone input of a radio transmitter and receiver that were tuned to the frequency of the base station of the IMTS uh, radio receiver. And you could basically spoof uh, any, any valid mobile number that you knew. So if you knew a guy's phone number, you knew, you knew his mobile ID. It was the area code plus the last four digits. So let's take a look at that mode. So to get into that mode on the box, you press and hold the star key to enter into the IMTS, what I call the IMTS ANI mode, or the Automatic Number Identification Mode. This will allow you to generate and send a set of tones that will identify the mobile. And that the way that is encoded is different than the dial pulse digits were sent for actually dialing a number. So we're in that mode now, and um, this used two separate tones, uh, one tone for the make, the other for the break, and they were set at 50% make break, and it used a parity system so that the break part of the dial pulse uh, was either encoded with a tone or with silence, depending if it was the even uh, pulse in the dial sequence. It's kind of complicated. So, for example, if you had a digit, um, digit 10 you were playing, I'll play it. Can you hear at the very end? It's a high-pitched beep. All right, the even pulses within the 10, and there's 10 pulses, meaning every other pulse, um, instead of having silence after the beep, plays a second tone. The odd number pulses only have silence for the second part of the pulse. So there, was a, so there was a parity checking scheme at the receiver at the tower that could uh, tell if there were any dropouts, basically by, uh, by looking at the, uh, the parity bits inside there. Now the dial pulses did not have that, they were not as robust. So this is actually encoded in the tone generating scheme. You can hear on all the odd numbered numbers, you don't hear that little, uh, they sound different. Very short cheap, but on the two, Two pulses, but at the very end you do hear the the uh, the parity tone, and that tone would also play uh, for the inner digit spacing if the very last pulse 
happen to be an even number of pulses, which it is for the even numbers. So 2 always has the inner digit interval playing the tone, as well as the space interval within each individual pulse on the even number of pulses. So I know that sounds very confusing, but that's how it worked. So it sounded very strange and a lot different from the dial pulses. So the way, and, and in addition to this, there were three additional control tones that could be used to, to spoof the system. So you had to have a way of generating a number identification. Uh, only if you sent a valid number ID to the transmitter to the base station would you get a dial tone back. And thereafter you just dialed. So it was a way of unlocking the, um, the system. So you had uh, three tones. You had something called a guard tone. That tone always had to come at the very beginning of the A and I sequence, this number identification sequence. The second tone is the uh, hang-up tone. This just hangs the call up if you play it over the uh, error to the transmitter, or to the receiver on the tower. And the, the uh, last one is the seizure tone. Combination of two tones, those two tones would seize the radio channel. The way it worked is that all the radios would listen to the same channel at the same time and when you would transmit on the uh, on the corresponding uh, transmit frequency that corresponded to the transmitter's frequency, um, it would uh, seize the line and remove the tone and all the mobiles would move on to the next frequency but you would stay and continue to make your call on that frequency. So again, kind of complicated. This would actually seize the line and allow you to seize the channel and that would force every other mobile in the system to move on to the next one while you stayed on this channel to complete your call. So call setup and your conversation was done on that same channel. Uh, very similar really to how trunk systems work on landline systems. So to actually set up an ANI sequence, you can do it manually. So what you would do is you would first of all seize the line uh, once you were connected and keyed up your transmitter. That would now seize the channel. Then you would send a guard tone to start your ANI sequence. Then you would send the area code of the, of the mobile ID of the guy you wanted to spoof. Say it's 216. And say the last four digits of this phone number were 4895. And that's it. Thereafter, once that was validated, the um, base station was sent the dial tone back, and then you could switch to the dial pulse IMTS mode, which we'll show in a minute, to, um, to actually place the call. But this was the uh, mode that you would have to use to unlock it. Now, ideally, this would be done in a memory sequence, uh, not manually, because the system expected to see all those digits for the A and I run together. It might work done manually, but um, if you do it in memories, the timings are guaranteed to be correct, as if this could be used today. Although actually in Canada, I think there might be a, some IMTS systems left, or possibly in the Far East. So let's do that. Let's set up a, um, a memory. So we'll go into record mode. We'll play the uh, seizure tone to grab the channel. We'll play the guard tone to start the A and I sequence. And we'll play, uh, we'll do Chicago area code. And we'll do 5858 eight as the last four digits. So that's it. That's all we need to get a dial tone if we uh, have a valid mobile ID here. So let's save this to memory 1. And that's pretty much all you need to unlock it. Now, uh, there's a second mode that's accessed by pressing the, um, the pound key. By pressing that, we're going to IMTS dial pulse mode. We have the same control codes available, although the only one really useful here is probably the, the hang-up code. But we have the guard, which you don't need for dial pulses, really, but it's here. You've got the, uh, the hang-up to disconnect the call, and you've got the uh, seizure tone. And these sound pretty much like a regular 2600 dial pulse mode on the box, or the AC1 or AC9 modes, except instead of silence on the break portion of the uh, make break, you've got a second tone present. So uh, it sounds a bit busier than a regular uh, regular AC dial pulse uh, trunk system for landlines.
So let's uh, record a phone number. Six. Um, three. Zero. Four. Eight. Five. Two. Nine. Nine. Five. And we'll save that to memory two. All right, that was done in our IMTS dial pulse mode, as opposed to the star, which gets us into the IMTS uh, ANI mode. So now we'll go into memory playback. Now, if we play black one, that'll act, that'll send the access sequence. That'll get us dial tone from the IMTS uh, mobile phone system, and then the second one will actually dial the digits. So you would key up your transmitter on the idle frequency. You could tell that by listening to a scanner and listening for your idle tone. Then you would send the A and I. You send the uh, first of all the seizure after you keyed up your transmitter, which we've stored. Then there'd be a pause. Then you would send your guard tone, which we've also recorded. Then the A and I sequence, and then you would hear a dial tone come back on the transmitter side of the, of the uh, full duplex connection. So it's not something like this. The whole access sequence. Do it again. We've got the seizure, followed by the guard tone, followed by the A and I sequence. Then we've got a dial tone back, and thereafter you could just press memory two, which would send the IMTS dial pulses, and complete your call. And if you dialed an 800 number, you could switch to blue box mode and then blue box it over the air, which apparently was done according to some old files I've seen. So you can hear that sounds different from the A and I. Um, A and I is also sent at 20 pulses a second, as opposed to 10 pulses per second for the um, for the actual dial pulses. We'll play the, that again. A and I, including the seizure and the uh, guard tone. And the uh, dial pulse. Slower, half, half, half the speed of the A and I. Again, a very esoteric mode. The only reason I included it is because I used to work on these systems a long time ago, and uh, I happened to have some technical manuals, and had actually written some software back in the early days for IMTS systems. So, thought it would be kind of fun to put on. Couldn't think of any other tone modes to fill up the remaining three slots on the box, so I uh, thought I'd toss in these two just for uh, having some very esoteric modes on here.